I'm going to be sharing with you guys an update on my how to make an online course video. If you guys are OGs, you will know that I normally only release sit down educational videos, but I thought that a more informal vlog style video would better encapsulate what it takes to create an online course the good, the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> I started creating Skillshare courses in May of 2020, and since July of 2020, have been able to cover my rent using the money I have earned on Skillshare every single month since. Granted, I do get paid in dollars, and my living expenses in Cape Town, South Africa are pretty low, but there isn't a single person I know that wouldn't be interested in earning passive income in a super legitimate and fun way. And it's really changed my life sharing my work more openly online. So I hope that by being super transparent and candid about the process and the earnings, that more people will be inspired to try their hand at it too. As many of my YouTube videos are of course about WhatsApp and WhatsApp for business, I really wanted to give a full go to creating a comprehensive WhatsApp for business course for anyone interested in using WhatsApp for marketing purposes. I had previously uploaded about five videos onto Skillshare specifically about WhatsApp to see if the course would get any traction because I was a bit worried that the audience is very American and WhatsApp is not as widely used in the States. But I've noticed that the course has gotten 255 students regardless but the reviews were kind of indicating that students wanted a more comprehensive course covering all aspects of WhatsApp marketing. So I was super excited when I had the opportunity with the December holidays to overwrite the old course content and spruce up the course with all new, better and more beautifully shot content. So in this vlog, you're gonna follow me for three days of course creation. I know that my process is so far from perfect, but I hope it gives you some idea on how to go about creating a course in your very own way. To help you, I've also created a Notion template, which not only covers all content in the Skillshare teacher handbook, it also includes all data on my earnings and how I track the progress of my course from inception to launch. It's available using the link in my description box. You are welcome. My Skillshare teaching profile is also there. So please do be sure to follow me on Skillshare to check out my journey unfold. I would love to inspire other teachers to follow in my footsteps as after all, who else wants to have their rent covered by passive income? Welcome to my complete WhatsApp marketing course. I'm so thrilled that you're here. I've been making YouTube videos about WhatsApp and WhatsApp for business for the last two years. And collectively, these videos about WhatsApp and WhatsApp for business have been watched more than 200,000 times. So sharing this journey on YouTube has really made me so happy. So as with all of my courses, I want it to be fun, I want it to be casual and a really informative experience for you. So I've included all of my favorite tips, tricks and hacks as we go to keep things super fun and super engaging. If at any point you would like to get in touch, I would love to hear from you in the comments or in the review section. Does that sound good to you? I can't wait to see you on the inside. Sugar sweet, you got what I need. Sipping on the potion, all that kind of potion. Just my kind of heat, keep it on repeat. Tested by the potion, love it, this the potion. You always take 
this is probably the view you are more used to seeing when it comes to my YouTube or if you've taken any of my Skillshare with Udemy classes over on those platforms. Um, so what I've been doing now is basically finalizing the script for the remaining sections, which I still need to complete. So what I've gone ahead and done is just emailed myself the script. Um, and what that allows me to do is then open it on the teleprompter app. So I'll actually just show you exactly what the teleprompter looks like and how the teleprompter app works as well. So let's do that. So please ignore all the Christmas presents <laughs> on the left hand side, but this is effectively the teleprompter. It's got this Z shaped piece of glass. So you basically put in your phone over here. Um, I use a premium version of the app a teleprompter which allows you to mirror the copy which is important so that um, it appears in the correct uh, correctly on the on the screen of your phone and basically then reflecting up here and then you'll see once you put this dark cover over um, it's quite easy then to read whatever's reflecting on the screen here um, so the teleprompter was super cheap I can link it down below for South Africans, I'm not exactly sure if there's an equivalent overseas or where this one originally comes from, but I just bought it off Take Lot and it was super affordable. Um, so that's how I do that. And then here you can just see that I've emailed it to myself over there um, so that I can open it on my phone. The other thing that I forgot to show you guys is actually just the boom pole as well as the microphone. So this is a Rode VideoMic Pro, which, <laughs> I, I seem to change the battery so often that I've actually stopped putting the cover on. Um, and there you can see my very expensive high-tech tripod, <laughs> which at this stage, don't even ask me why I'm not using an actual tripod, it's just boxes of Christmas presents. After a couple hours of shooting, I dragged the footage into DaVinci Resolve and did a rough edit by looking at the sound waves, cutting out the troughs and any ums and ahs. I then overlay screen shares b-roll and of course titling and by editing in daily batches i can also pick up if the framing and audio looks good also add markers where i need to come back to something and i learned this approach from shelby church she is honestly one of my favorite youtubers by shooting and editing and then shooting it gives you way more insight into what is looking good what's working and what's missing i then break for lunch and made a healthy salad it's summer in cape town so i find taking breaks to sit in the sun and swim are essential for my sanity and and in case you are wondering, yes, I am wearing the same top. The Skillshare Teacher's Handbook suggests that instead of filming in one long batch that you film over multiple days. So I'm just wearing this exact same black t-shirt to make it a bit less obvious that it's over so many days as I present, because I think presenting all of that over one day would have been an awful thing for students to have to sit through. So what I'm busy with at the moment, and hopefully the computer fan is not too <laughs> irritating, but basically I seem to be having difficulties when I export from DaVinci Resolve for whatever reason, it changes the frame rate or does something strange. And even though I've checked the settings on Skillshare and it seems to all be in order, I seem to have to use an application called Handbrake. So if anyone is getting upload errors when they upload to Skillshare, you'll notice that sometimes you just need to do, do a little um, extra bit of magic. So that's what I'm busy doing now, which is why my computer is making such a noise. Um, I kind of like to upload as I go when it comes to Skillshare so that I fully complete each module in terms of like shooting, editing, and then upload. And then it kind of feels like it's biting everything into slightly smaller chunks, which I find is really helpful. I get very overwhelmed with the online course creation process. And even though it's probably like my sixth or so course that I'm actually filming and releasing, I've just found that if you do all the editing in one batch and then all up uploading in one batch, it can become quite overwhelming because it's like you're just doing one task for a whole day. So I've been just trying to mix it up a little bit more. Um, it is a beautiful day outside, so it's also bothering me that I've been hard at work either in front of the camera or slaving away in, in terms of technical issues, but it's all totally going to be worth it. I'm really looking forward to overwriting this course. I did kind of have it in two minds whether I should just try and delete the course entirely, but on Skillshare I'm not necessarily sure that that's 
actually even possible. I think you might be able to archive it, um, but yeah, because there's 250 students already enrolled in the course, I'm just going to overwrite over it. It wasn't getting the greatest reviews just because it was meant to be an introductory course, so it was only 18 minutes long and some people were saying like it's not detailed enough. So I'm hoping that the negative initial feedback isn't going to put people off because obviously now that I have a proof of concept in terms of that course topic, this is going to be a whole lot longer and super in detail. I'm actually hoping for it to be in the region of like 60 to 90 minutes. That's kind of my sweet spot in terms of these courses, but I'm not 100% sure. This is the definition of SpongeBob SquarePants. This <laughs> several hours later meme because it is now 20 past nine in the evening. I have been editing for a good four hours, five hours, who even knows? And this, as I say, is only half of the footage that I actually require for the full course. So that is why I like to do the editing and uploading in batches and not try and do all of the filming, then all of the editing, then all of the uploading. Anyways, it is going well. I feel like I'm making progress. I also feel like I edit a little bit better at night. I have infinitely more patience for whatever reason. I've also made note, especially in this course, to include loads and loads of B-roll, which are basically things that kind of cut away and show you when you're talking about like a small business owner, it'll cut away and show you like a florist. So I've tried to be like quite creative because I know obviously that people don't want to watch talking headshots for any extended period of time. So I've really tried to avoid that as best as I can. But yes, it does take a lot of time especially when you're starting with a blank slate. So I had not got any kind of B-roll previously um, for the WhatsApp for Business course. I hadn't downloaded anything ahead of time. So really like sourcing all of that stuff, downloading it, inputting it, it does take quite some time. I do sometimes use an editor, which I didn't mention previously. I work with two incredible editors actually. Um, but because I'm on holiday basically, there's like a weekend and then we go into December holidays, I actually do have the time in this instance to edit, but if I didn't have the time then I would feel very confident and comfortable outsourcing the editing as well. So if you're feeling like you're not good enough at editing, that need not be the reason why you don't make an online course, it is obviously possible to find workarounds. But anyways, I am going to wrap on up here because it is a Friday night and yeah, I will catch you guys tomorrow for day two of filming this course. Thank you for coming on this journey with me. Hopefully this content is super helpful to other people who are looking to film Udemy or Skillshare classes. That's all I can hope for. Last point to make is also just if you are editing the stuff yourself, just bear in mind how long it really does take because I was only filming today for about an hour. I've been editing probably for four or five hours and I'm pretty competent and comfortable in DaVinci Resolve. So it just goes to show that it is a lot more editing obviously than shooting. And interestingly enough, like when I'm looking at the timeline now, it looks like I've pretty much only edited about half of today's footage. So honestly, the editing is really the most time consuming thing because I was hoping to wrap up all of today's filming and have it edited and uploaded already today still but it's just not going to happen and that's with only one hour's worth of footage so honestly by trying to create and craft a quality course and not just using screen recordings and slides and actually doing it as though pretty much the exact same workflow as what I would do for YouTube in terms of scripting and so forth it, it does take its time the other thing that i always underestimate is obviously the time it takes to upload because as i said sometimes you do have those technical issues and you have to run things through handbrake so just don't put yourself under too much of a time crunch would be my advice there One of the absolute best things that I've learned when you are creating an online course is to keep a Google Sheet or a spreadsheet of the order of all of your modules and then where they are in terms of your workflow. So for example, I've got scripted, shot and edited and uploaded as the three phases um, that a module could be in 
and then when I pop it into the edited and uploaded column then I'll also put the um, full length of the course or of that module so at the end you can obviously tally just exactly how long your total course is but then you can also see maybe some modules need to be split into two and um, particularly if they're over like 10 minutes long for example I would definitely suggest splitting that um, just to make sure you know you can actually see what each are contributing and then similarly like I've got one that's 51 seconds so I might want to relook at that module um, if not now then obviously at a later stage but I would say that it's almost impossible otherwise um, to keep track because when you're uploading to Skillshare and Udemy you almost want like a single point of truth which is this Google Sheet or Excel sheet um, which is going to enable you to make sure that it gets uploaded in the exact correct order um, and that yeah during the process you obviously know exactly what's happening something not great happened last night which is just kind of Murphy's law because I honestly was thinking at the time I was like gee this is like the most seamless kind of like course um that I've like filmed and edited like nothing had gone wrong no like you know no uh, memory cards had gotten corrupted no hard drives had gotten you know no Google Drive, like literally absolutely zero technical issues. And I was like, oh my gosh, thank goodness I'm filming this one versus previous ones that have just been like such ball legs. <laughs> like the one course I'll never forget. Like I think I like completely lost my cool, but I was editing on a MacBook Pro um, on, I think it was iMovie. And this thing was just crashing consistently. Um, and then on Max, there's like an other folder that gets full. And then in order to like try and access those folders, I literally had to like Google it, like Google a hundred things, Google like how do you actually, um, you know, prevent the other file from being grayed out, go into the other file, which is like not recommended because you can delete like system files, delete that. It was just like an absolute, absolute nightmare. And since editing on a dull XPS, um controversial opinion and davinci resolve i actually haven't had any technical issues like the computer won't crash i don't lose work like nothing but i should have known obviously the second that i thought that i um saved the project and i was like okay i'm just gonna um save quickly and then go and do something else and then come back which i did and reopen DaVinci Resolve after having closed it. And I can see all of the markings in terms of like those red and blue markers that I'd put in and none of the footage. And so then I Googled it and this was all like day two footage. I Googled it and apparently it's like a common issue with DaVinci Resolve with like footage going missing. So it wasn't like a huge amount of work. It was probably like one hour, but it was still enough to like obviously throw me off my stride. <laughs> So what I would normally have done is actually created each of these um, sections or modules as their own uh, project in DaVinci Resolve. But what I've decided to do for this instance is actually just drop everything onto the same timeline. So you can see um, it's quite a lot of footage. I think there's already about 45 minutes worth of footage. And then I just set um, the in point and the out point, um, And then I do an export just of that section. Um, so I'm going to see how I get on with that um, and then I'm also just adding like little markers I haven't done it here yet, but basically um, Like popping in a little Red marker in between the sections so that I can see quite easily um, Where each section's meant to start and end. So yeah, I mean this is what DaVinci Resolve looks like if you're not as familiar with it I really like the platform and also it's free. I'm still editing on the free version. I haven't even upgraded and then in terms of handbrake that I mentioned, um, you can see you literally just pull it in here and then it does something what it, which it calls encoding. And so now when I go into my Google Chrome, it's actually uploading this encoded version as opposed to the exported version from DaVinci Resolve. So yeah, I mean, you can see how short this course was. Initially, it was actually only five videos long. Whereas, as I said, this video is going to be so much more in depth and hopefully super valuable to anyone who's wanting to market on WhatsApp. 
What I do really like about Skillshare is they make it quite clear in terms of walking through things like class guidelines. So you'll see, because I'm in the teaching section, I can view any of the class guidelines. There's helpful resources down this one side in terms of how classes work, class requirements, choosing a topic, crafting a project, outlining a class and filming a class. So I feel like they're trying to really kind of cater for people not getting frustrated or fed up and then giving up. And then here you can see with the upload, I'm going to delete um, the intro that I'm overriding. But what's quite interesting is just to note, obviously, um, this little um, gallery image is basically what is going to then pull through in terms of the front cover of your course. And you can actually create custom ones um, for every little section, which is quite cool. And then also just in terms of my scripting, basically I do everything on Word and I just use um, this heading functionality to then like set up titles so that I can actually click and navigate through the different sections super easily. Um, so, so far I've done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different sections. Whereas I think the course at the end will probably have like 19 or so. Let me just double check. But yeah, quite a lot of um, copy as you can see and then me just making notes in terms of what's been done versus um, what I'm still busy with. So So the primary stock videography site that I use is Pixel. So they obviously also have their um, photography section, but I really do like their video stuff. You can literally toggle between photos and videos. And then that's what allows you to download um, so-called B-roll. The reason it's called B-roll, if you're wondering, is because A-roll is the talking head shot or camera A. So the main piece of um, footage or content and then B-roll would be any kind of supporting evidence like you can see exactly small business and then any associated videos of small businesses. So I hope it helps to clarify because some of us did not go to film school and so I don't want to take these things for granted. Oh, my God.